Hello all you crazy drywallers across the land and welcome to a frustrating episode of the Drywall Podcast. I am your host once again, Nick Harmon. With us today, we have Jason Marshall of Jams Drywall out of Louisville, Kentucky, joining us for the second time. Jason was on episode 47 all the way back in March of 22, and I've been following his success closely since then. Seems recently he had a project that failed to pay and it made me curious so I reached out to see if he'd be willing to tell his story and what a story it is this guy is like making videos uh like promoting us right like giving us videos of he would stop by every day take a video you know you guys need drywall jams drywall blah 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 these guys are okay. great no problem sure they work for free so So we get to the, we get to the end of the job and I send him, you know, the invoice and he's like, he's like, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm about to get paid. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you as as soon as possible, blah, blah, blah. Two weeks go by, you know, I'm like, Hey man, like what's up with this money? Like, oh man, the homeowners are being a pain in the butt. Like I'm supposed to get, supposed to get this check from an insurance job. Another two weeks later. Um, well, somewhere in between, somewhere in between, he, he told me, he goes, he goes, oh man, I've, I've, this is my last job that I'm doing for my company. I've taken a position with another company and I've filed for bankruptcy. We discuss the importance of a sound contract, what it means to lien a property and how to negotiate payment when a customer simply won't pay. I appreciate Jason's candidness in this interview, and hopefully you'll learn some contractual techniques to ensure this doesn't happen to you. The Drywall Podcast was brought to you today by Fresco Harmony, making walls better since 2004. You can find information about Fresco Harmony at csrbuilding.com if you're up in Canada. If you're here in the United States, you can check us out on the website, www.frescoharmony.com, and see a list of retailers that we sell through. Also, you can get a free sample pack if you've never used the product. All you have to do is reach out to me directly at info at frescoharmony.com and we'll get you hooked up wherever you are guests of the drywall podcast will receive a sweet swag bucket from our friends at csr just for coming on the show how cool is that but for now jason marshall on the 112th episode of the dry while podcast the woes of not getting paid by a general contractor let's get into it oh yeah what's up bro time to vent time to vent our frustrations dang we got (laughs) enough of them doing drywall that's for damn sure (laughs) we got Jason Marshall jams drywall back in the house. Part two, baby, part two. Literally and figuratively. Last, did we have you, was it 22 or 23 March? Uh, I would say 23, I guess. Maybe 47. Jeez. Been Been doing it for a while now, dude. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this would be 112, and you were on uh, episode 47. I like that. Is that your little shop there? Yeah, yeah. That, that thing's a monster. <laughs> What's the square footage of that beast? Uh, 1,500 square feet. Okay, not bad, not bad. Nice, perfect. I think I think the camera makes it look a little bigger than it is, but... Yeah, you got size. it on. You've got it on uh, fisheye there a little bit. Yeah, the you wide perfect. angle. Perfect. 
perfect size. I would love a shop like that. Uh, yeah, my my little office is uh, maybe five hundred square feet, something like that. Yeah, uh, had, maybe I, maybe six. It's little. I did I did the whole at home shop thing. I mean, I got I got three garages at my house, and I converted yeah. those, and mm -hmm. we just kind of outgrew it, and I ended up getting this yeah. space and. Uh, I love it, man. It's it's it it makes you uh, it makes you want to do more, right? Obviously, because now I have more overhead. So yeah, it makes it makes you want to do more. And then um, the big thing was like, I'd have to come to the house, like to my house, to, like pick up some materials or some tools or something. And then I'm home, right? It's like two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, yeah, I could just stay home the rest of the day, you know, like not do yeah. anything not go back to work and yeah now like you come here and it's like you just you, it just makes you want to work i mean because there's nothing yeah. to do here except for work and yeah I mean, you can play basketball if you want to so that's nice that's nice i i agree i had uh i have an office that's away from my house that i go to i do this here now because of my internet connection at my office uh, I have not, they changed the internet connection and I haven't been able to get a extender to work. So, but I do like doing the podcast at my house. It's a little janky, but, uh, but I like it. It's comfortable. Uh, you know, I definitely get what you're saying though. When you have an office that's away from your house, though, it, when I am at my office, I'm working. It's all business. Yeah. So yeah. what else are you going to do to, you know, take a nap? I do have a couch and I, w I won't lie. Occasionally I will lay down for 20 minutes. <laughs> Man, I've, I've thought about putting one in here, bro. <laughs> careful, careful with the couch, dude. Yeah. I have like a futon, like a nice leather futon from Costco. And it's, it's mostly for clients too. I have a showroom as well where I show off Fresco Harmony. So you know, people can come in, uh, buy product, look at the walls. Uh, you know, I'll I'll sell them Presco Harmony, but uh this is our second location. I've had it I've had one previously, but I didn't have like this much space. Um and the biggest thing was people bringing you the money. Like if you have an actual location, mm -hmm. they tend to want to bring you your money versus when you don't, you know, you're having to go meet them, drive to yeah. them, or meet chase. them at a gas I, station. I call it chasing. You chase yeah. them down. Some some contractors, you actually have to like go to where you think they'll be because they won't yeah. return. They return your phone call just fine until you need fucking money, and then it's like you know, if they need shit done, they're like right on the phone. Yeah. But as soon as it's like, hey, dude, the job's wrapped, like, uh, you know, homeowners, not so much. Like, homeowners are like, can I get you a check? How much do you need? You know, all yeah. of that. Contractors, uh-uh, dude. Nope. Yeah, so now it's like, you know, <laughs> I just send them the bill, and I'm like, hey, like, drop it off at my shop. There's a slot in the door for mail. Oh, perfect. Like, just just Perfect. you know just slide it in there like we're not gonna come chase the money down <laughs> right right well we'll do a little background uh if you have not listened to uh jason's episode it is episode 47 and we do a deep dive into jim's drywall you were 29 last year i assume you're 30 this year unless 31, you're 30 so maybe, you're 31 maybe maybe, two years i think it was 22 it has been over a year, and uh, we're glad to have you back on. Uh, I've been following your your success. Back then, you had, uh, I have my notes here, you had 20 employees, which is quite a few, so that's enough to keep you running, keep some trucks out in the field. Uh, how, or do you still have around that size? No, so if you count, so we've got, we had six full-time employees. I just had to let one of them go. So now we're down to five. But if you include the drywall hangers, um, you know, they're, nah, they're a team. No, 
they're they're no. a team of like five or six guys there. So we don't include the hangers, dude. No, they're not important. No, nah, let's not talk. <laughs> let's not talk about those guys. I got pretty good ones, man. I'll bet. Uh, we've only had a couple uh, hangers on here. Uh, obviously, we've had people that do everything, but like strictly hanging. Uh, Kyle Catling with uh, Drywall Junkies. Uh, he's been on here. Uh, he's strictly hanging, I think. I love hanging drywall. Yeah. I love it. I, th- I think I would like it too. I never really got into it. Because I started out in finishing and I was like, that looks like a pain in the ass. Yeah. But the little bit that I've done, it's I like the math. I like the cutting. Uh, yeah. I think I think and I like hard work. I think I'd be I'd be good at it. And I think I'd have fun at it. It's just it seems like it's it it's is back, fun, man. Like, backbreaking. Actually, right. Yeah. And the, but if you actually have, you know, a partner that actually right. knows how to hang drywall, like, dude, it's. Yeah, like I love it. Do you uh have you seen the exoskeleton that CSR is now uh promoting? And would you be inclined to it seems like not necessarily for finishing. I don't need an exoskeleton to hold up a sander, but like for holding those sheets up or lifting sheets, forget about it. That thing see I was like, oh, okay, because I saw a drywall dude using one and i was like oh well that makes sense like an exoskeleton for lifting you know 12 yeah. foot 5 8 sheets okay turn that bitch up <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? yeah, for five, yeah for five eights for sure uh <laughs> half inch probably you know probably not but i don't know maybe once i get older you know obviously age definitely comes into play so yeah yeah yeah, you're you're still pretty young. Uh, it seemed like it would be a good. Uh, I'm not sure what they're charging. They're probably not cheap. Would be my no. guess. They come in a fancy box. They're battery powered. I don't know what the They're price point. Heavy. I don't know. I I yeah, don't no. know. I I feel like they keep getting dialed all the time. I had the drywall artist Scott Montgomery on the uh uh on the podcast and he uses one but it was an it was a older iteration and the the it seems like the new one is pretty dialed like it looks right it looks pretty sharp you know and ergonomic and all of that yeah, stuff. i've seen the i've seen the the festool like festool came out with one or yeah. whatever I've seen, yeah. I've seen videos of that i think that's the oh. one that's been floating around lately yeah, looks pretty cool. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know, in the future. Yeah, pretty, you, you pretty you're not like you're not like ah maybe I'd buy one of those. Would you have to try it first? I feel like maybe you'd have to try it first. Like they yeah, should have a loaner. Sure. They should have a loaner program where they like have a bunch that they I like. How much it cost? I don't know, man. Uh, I should have done better research on that. Uh, it, it it is interesting. I could text Sean Ramsden right now and ask him. You know what we should do? You know it would be really funny. You wouldn't be able to hear him, but I could call uh Sean Ramsey and see if we could get him on the phone. Here it is right here, man. Thirty five hundred bucks. Thirty five hundred? Hey yeah, Siri, a- hey Siri, call Sean Ramsey. That's like the first one that pops up on Google ads, you know. You reached the voicemail box of Sean Ramsey. You, that. That you can hear that. He's not not spending time with his kids, dude. He's in Ottawa at some, like, he's at some thing. Whatever. Please record your message. When you are finished recording, you may have to leave a message. Switch camera. Hey, it's your old buddy, Nick. You're live on the Drywall Podcast. Uh, It's a damn shame that we didn't get a hold of you, but I'm talking here with Jason Marshall of Jams Drywall and... We were going to ask some questions about this uh, exoskeleton, but uh, you're obviously too busy to take my call. Uh, if you get it, if you want to call back in the next hour, I'm going to be on the show with yeah. I was uh, going to order Jason. forty of them right now. Yeah, he was going to order forty, but uh, so you missed out on that order, buddy. But that's okay. Uh, you know, there'll be another 40, 40 unit order coming down the pipe. <laughs> 
I'm sure. I uh, hope you're well. Yeah, if you get this in the next hour, give me a call. Bye. We can do a little background dirt on Jason, but the reason that for this uh, follow-up podcast was because I saw Jason was doing some keyboard warrior stuff talking about a contractor maybe that he didn't get paid and uh this is a, and it's interesting to me and uh I think it'd be interesting to our audience there was there's been a couple instances where I haven't gotten paid that I want to talk about real quick and then we can dive into we can do a little background history on you too again if you want to listen to Jason's episode 47, you get some background on his company. He's younger, he's ambitious, and he's done very well for himself in Louisville, Kentucky. Not Louisville, Louisville. And uh, so I had uh, recently, this one was funny, but I had a contractor. We uh, did a patch. This is a four-year-old and I I just charged him hourly for my guy's rate because we were trying some Fresco Harmony on the exterior pizza oven. And it kind of failed a little bit. We covered up some of this. And he knew. I was like, dude, well, I'll try the sealer. But it's like, this is exterior. No promises. You know, right. and he was like, oh, that's okay. You know, blah, blah, blah. And we had to go back and we had to fix it a couple times. And I think... I charged $25 an hour, just my guy's rate plus materials. So it wasn't a very big bill. And I sent the guy the bill and uh, crickets, you know, like for for a while to where I stopped sending it. But it always pops up on my QuickBooks, like if somebody yeah. doesn't pay. And uh, fast forward, about a year ago, he bought some Fresco Harmony from me, but I had it in my mind. Like, I don't oh, forget. No I don't care if it's $50. I won't yeah, forget. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and my theory is you wouldn't s steal $50 off of somebody's dresser. Why the fuck would you not pay your contractor $50? Um, so I, uh, so the last time he wanted Fresco Harmony again, I was like, motherfucker. And <laughs> so I texted him. Price just went up. <laughs> nah, I texted him. I was like, dude, I was like, hey, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware you have an outstanding balance with Fresco Harmony, $150. He was like, it totally, it must have slipped through the cracks. I had no idea. You know, now I got him on the hook for Fresco Harmony product. But uh, he was very cool about it. He paid me an extra $75 and uh, oh, we nice. took care of it. That was a good experience. Uh, the bad experience was a contractor. I drove 45 minutes out to a job for three hours. They didn't, we finished Fresco Harmony on a fireplace and then they didn't uh, do the trim around the fireplace. So I don't do the drywall. I'm just the prima donna that comes out and does the fancy walls. So they had to float all the way around the fireplace, put in L metal, and float around the fireplace. Well, that jacks the whole fireplace. You can't just do a patch, like, and it's a brand, place, it's though. it's a brand new one million dollar home or whatever. I want to redo the whole fireplace, so I fix the I fix the patch base coat, let that dry, uh, and then reskim the entire fireplace, reseal the entire fireplace. Three hours. I was pretty proud of myself at how fast I went, and. Uh, $220 dude would not pay. I was telling my friend about it. Who's an attorney. He's like, well, I'll write him a letter. And I was like, no big deal. And I was like, dude, this guy is not going to pay. Hall of fame parade of homes builder. Just, just a preface. Like, and I was a member of the HBA at the time. And that's how he found out about me. I did a presentation. They call it a lunch and learn for the home builders association. Yeah. And, uh, would not pay ended up going ended up taking the guy to court and the judge ended up throwing it out he probably spent five thousand dollars fighting a 210 dollars bill and at the end of the day the judge threw it out and i didn't pay a dime my friend like just handled the whole thing <laughs> he really was like, he was blown away <laughs> yeah and i was wow. like i told i told you i told you that motherfucker wasn't gonna pay and i'm Damn. still like dude where's my money you I still, me, I still have the bill. Yeah. So, so when you're in, and it, 
it disrupts me wrong. We are subcontractors. We make our money. You know, we feed our families. It is important that if we're doing the work and getting the work done, that we get paid. If I talk to the contractor, he might have a different story. I don't know. But you're the person that I know. And uh, I was curious about your story because you started to come onto the social media and you were like, I forget how it went, but you were very vague and professional, but you were still like, dude, these guys are, these guys are not paying me. So I want to run through first, what type of contract did you have in place? So um, we use a, we use a software called Jobber now. Uh, we just, we've been using it for a year or so we, and then we have signed contracts, you know, stating what we're going to do, uh, how much it's going to be. And then we also have in there that we take a deposit, uh, 60% deposit once the material is on site. And then we do the 40% final when the job is complete. Okay. Um, it is, it is partial my fault. Um, I yeah. didn't take the deposit that I should have from the guy because I knew the guy, right? Yeah, so like, you did. Yeah, this you done jobs for him. It's like it's okay this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, you know, <laughs> thought I could trust him, whatever. Um, <laughs> so what happened was it was it was a basement, and um, it was pretty far away. It was about an hour away. You know, we usually don't don't go that far. Okay. But we did for him. Um, it was seven thousand dollars for labor and material, all that good stuff. So okay, we uh, hang the drywall, do everything. And what's your whole, what is your profit margin, really quick, on that seven thousand dollar nut? Uh, if you don't mind, it should have been around thirty five percent. Okay. So. And wait, wait, out of that 35%, is that like, are you calculating taxes and all that nope. stuff? No, nope. nope. that's, okay. just, that's just labor and material profit. That okay. Does include, that don't include like everyday Business. expenses, overhead, stuff like that. That's just okay. job profit. So it's not, not, not much profit, but you know, as drywallers, we don't, we don't make a whole lot of profit, but whatever. Yeah. So of that 35%, your, your take is what? 10%, 15%, something like that. You, Jason Marshall. Okay. It varies from job yeah. to job. Yeah. Cause I, I'm breaking down the pain in the ass factor of you're taking on this job. It's an hour away. You're burning two hours a day, uh, driving already. And how much time were you on the job? I mean, you know, me personally, I wasn't, I wasn't right. on the job. No, I can pull it all up right here and show. Yeah, it pull it up. To, did you drive? Everything. Did you drive out to look at the job? Yeah, I drove out there to to, to look at it, and then uh, I also okay. drove out there to drop off the dump trailer and. Okay. Uh, yeah, line out the guys. Yeah, yeah, and that was kind of about it. And then how long were your guys out there? Yeah, I had one guy do the whole job, like the finishing. It was one guy taping, mudding, sanding, all by okay. himself. So what about hanging? It took, it Did took you have a... 48, 48 hours to do okay. that. And then, yeah, our hangers, obviously, they did it in one day. Okay. So, and the shitty part here is... Uh, yeah, I only had a profit margin of twenty three percent, which was which was sixteen hundred and twenty nine dollars. Okay, um, but somebody damaged the bathtub. I okay. don't know if it was my guy specifically <laughs> because the electrician they had the electrician in the bathroom working as well. Ah, uh, those don't get me started, dude. But, got, there's you know, no place for the, electricians on the drywall podcast. I took the blame. I took the blame for it because it happens. You know, they rub their stilts against the tubs yeah. and scratch them and shit. I took I took the blame for it. Whatever. Um, okay. That cost me seven hundred and fifty dollars to have on the, the tub on this job. Mm -hmm. So took, of the yeah, sixteen of the sixteen twenty nine minus seven hundred, now you're down under a thousand dollars. Yeah. Pro yeah it was profit. Eight hundred. Eight hundred and seventy-six dollars. Um, 
So I wasn't making shit. So the whole time we're doing this what's job. The, what's the point? What's the, the whole you're, time? You're already over. Job, you're over a week on the job. This guy, this guy is like making videos, uh, like promoting us, right? Like giving us videos of. He would stop by every day, take a video. You know, you guys need drywall, jams, drywall, blah blah blah. These guys are okay. great, no problem. Sure, they work for free. So, so we get to the we get to the end of the job. And I send him, you know, the invoice. And he's like, he's like, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm about to get paid. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you as, as soon as possible, blah, blah, blah. Two weeks go by, you know, I'm like, hey man, like, what's up with this money? Like, oh man, the homeowners are being a pain in the butt. Like, I'm supposed to get, supposed to get this check from an insurance job. Another two weeks later, um, well, somewhere in between, somewhere in between, he he told me he goes, he goes, oh man, I I this is my last job that I'm doing for my company. I've taken a position with another company, and I've filed for bankruptcy. And I was uh -oh. like, well, I wish. And I literally said this. I said, man, I wish I would have known that prior to doing this job, right? Especially without taking the sixty percent deposit. Exactly. Your bill was for the seventy five hundred or whatever. So your final invoice was for the entire amount. Yeah. You've d you've done the job. It's complete. Did you pay the seven hundred for the tub already? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you so now you're negative. Uh, the yeah, the everybody invoice paid. at at this point, and so we're a month after the invoice has been delivered. Uh, he butters you up with the video content. <laughs> yep. Hey, hey, man! At least I got you some really great video content. The shit, the shit's gonna go viral. And, and so what he did was, <laughs> so he took a position with a home builder, and uh, he, okay. he plugged me. He plugged me into the home builder. Okay. And I went, and, I went and sat down with this home builder. Uh, they right. gave me the spreadsheet of what they're paying and all this, all this bull crap. They weren't paying shit. I told him no. And, um, okay. And he, he planned it all out, bro. So, and then like push come to shove, man. He, uh, he was like, man, this is, this has been the worst job I've ever done. Apparently the homeowners have fired me off. They've kicked me off the job. Okay. Uh, and he had already had it painted, the floors put in, like like everything was done. And uh um, Yeah. And I was like, okay, well then like what does that mean? Where where where's my money? Like and he's like, Oh, I just he's like, I don't have it. Just flat out, I don't have it. Okay. Now did you oh, no, sign no no first? Hold on. First Wait, you did sign a contract though with the person. Yeah. You didn't get the deposit, but he did sign a contract. Correct. Okay. So prior to that. So I was on vacation and uh, he tells me, you know, that it was the worst job ever. Uh, sure. And he goes, he goes, the homeowner is going to pay you directly. Perfect. And I said, okay, well, I said, okay, well, what's their, what's their info? I said, never mind. I found it. I went to truepeoplesearch.com, found all their info, got all their that's, kids info. That's not in alignment. I mean, everything. That's not in alignment with your contract though. Like I wouldn't, I would have been, kind of pissed at that point and been like, dude, my contract is with you. If I'm you want to get the home and all that stuff, you didn't get into any of that. You're like, okay, Fred, I'm going to go get his, was his name Fred? No, nah, it's Tony. <laughs> Tony, God damn. I mean, I know I, I totally, I mean, I agree with you. Um, you know so, what I mean? So like, like, no, 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 Tony. The, no, my, uh, our, my contract is with you. And then what have you ever had to uh, lean or had you been in this experience prior to this? 10 years in business. I've never. 10 years. Never okay. Had, never had All right. Go, go ahead with the story. I just, I, I'll interrupt for like clarifying points. So I get a hold, I get a hold of the customer, the, the homeowners. And, um, you know, we explain the situation, whatever. And, um, they told me that they paid him like thirty thousand dollars, and they still owe him like ten grand. But you know, now they have to pay someone else to fix all this stuff that he did. Okay. And uh, 
they actually applauded me and said that I was the only true professional that he hired for this job, that everybody else was all like crackheads and stuff. So it come down to it. I'm like, Hey, you know, how much, you know, like we need to, we need to settle up on this, on this payment. And, um, they offered me $3,500. Beautiful. Half the, half the bill. And I said, you know, like, no, that's not, that's not acceptable. And uh, yeah. well, they were like, well, what is acceptable? I was like, $7,000. Like, 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 that's what I want. Like, it's, yeah, that's, I'm not like trying to settle for anything less. This is non negotiable. And so it's they're, they're seven because about... of the tub, I would assume, right? No, no, no. The, the official the bill was, was seven. seven, seven grand from the get go. Cause you already paid him for the tub. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I already paid all my guys. The you know everything's been paid. So uh, they were talking about taking legal procedures against him, you know, for the damages or whatever. Um, and okay. I told them, I said, well, you know, I said if you if you want to pay me the seven thousand, you know, I can give you a receipt for that, and a, and that will uh, release a lien waiver, and then right. you can you can sue him for the $7,000. And at that right. point, they, uh, at that point they said, well, we don't, we don't, we've talked to an attorney and, you know, we just bought this house. We don't plan on moving. They were like, we don't feel like we should give you the $3,500 and still have a lien on my house. They wanted me to take the 3,500 and just squash everything. And I was like, no, that's not acceptable. That's not, like, no, it's not how it works. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, let me talk to my lawyer. Um, so I met, met up with the lawyer. Okay. He, uh, got all the info and everything. And, uh, yeah, we is put this, a lien on the house real quick. Is this a construction attorney that you went to? Cause I know they have construction specific attorneys. I don't think so, but he, he was a referral okay. from, from a, from a home builder of mine. So he had okay. definitely dealt with it. Prior. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, we sent out the uh, we sent out the notice of lien to the homeowners. All right. And then you know a couple of days later, they actually had a lien on their house. Uh huh. And what does that mean? Off. What does that mean? So uh, you had a contract in place with the contractor. You did the work. The customer was satisfied with the work. The mm -hmm. customer being a homeowner was satisfied with the work regardless if the builder or the GC was not satisfied or whatever. Uh, you, and then you are able to, but you have to, in order to get a lien, I know you have to be licensed and insured like that type of stuff. Correct. Tell, walk us through what, uh, or me, uh, what that entails when you put a lien on a property. Is it an easy thing? Do you generally want to go through an attorney? So I have no idea how they do it. Okay. Um, you can go down to the courthouse and do it yourself, but I just simply paid this lawyer $250, okay. presented, him my con presented him my contract with the, with the dude's signature on it, and the address of the property. And then I also gave him all the information of who owns the home and all that okay. good stuff. So what does that mean you, when, when they put a lien on the property? In so your... what happens is, is when, when you have a lien on your house um, or anything, it means you cannot, when you go to sell it, you have to pay that lien off before you can sell it. Okay. And, it only lasts for a year in, in Kentucky. So you have to re renew it every year. Okay. Um, but my lawyer told me that we could, we could essentially foreclose on the house. For wow. That lien. Wow. Like I could push their house into foreclosure over that, that lien. Okay. So it's, a, a it's an Achilles, don't... it's an Achilles heel for a homeowner. If you've got a lien coming on your house. Yeah. So a lot of people in this industry, they don't know. A lot of homeowners don't understand this, but you are, as the homeowner, you are responsible for everyone that comes in your house getting paid. 
not just the contractor. You're responsible for all of his guys getting paid. So when you do, I'm sure you've done it before. When you do a commercial project, like restaurants and all that stuff for a contractor, you have to sign a lien release when you get paid saying mm -hmm. that your supply house was paid, all your guys have been paid and you've been paid in full and that you reserve all rights to put in a lien on the property. So technically homeowners should be doing the same thing. You know, they should be having their contractors sign lien releases. Also, before you sign a lien release, be like, you know, and obviously we always want to be like, not working for somebody that we don't trust but there are those situations the guy that didn't pay me the 150 bucks i had done jobs for and everything was fine i had done a couple jobs this was a patch uh but i have done jobs where i haven't gotten the money up front and i'm like a half up front half at the end guy too and people are like, oh, no, 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 get it all at the end. Or you've heard, you've heard different stories from contractors that are yeah, trying to be yeah. forthright or whatever. And it's like, no, 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 I'm not funding your project, dude. I need this money to pay for materials and my guy and well, run a do, business. Well, we do, like it says in our contract, is we take that 60% once the material is on site. Um, and that just, I explain it to the to the customer like that that gives them some insurance, right? Like you're not giving me money up front and we haven't done anything. So, you know, here's your material, all the drywalls here, the muds here. And that's, that's almost half the cost of the job anyways. Right. So here's insurance. You know, if I was to if, die if, or get, if you bail, and, they've got the materials. Bail, yeah. They've got something in collateral. So, and it, and it works out great. Yeah. yeah. You tell them it. when you sign the contract, you tell them I'm going to pay for materials with this and the t materials are going to get delivered to your house. Well, I'm, I've already paid for the material to okay. get delivered to their house and then I get the check. Oh, uh, okay. Any, I don't take any money. I don't take any money until the material is on the job site. Okay. All right. So that's pretty forthright too. Also. Um, okay, back to the story. Uh, you send a lien over to the homeowner, and uh, what happens next? So, I told I told the the attorney, you know, that I didn't want to talk to them. That all communications were to go through the lawyer. Smart. And um, so we went back and forth with ne negotiations. You know, they they came back with the same thirty five hundred dollars, and I was like, really? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, Did we've already went through this. So I countered back at like six grand and long story okay. short, we, set we settled at forty five hundred dollars. They paid with a credit card. So I was like, hey, you know, we gotta charge the extra three point five percent service charge on that. Like I'm not losing more money. So yeah. it was like forty seven hundred dollars and some change or whatever, you know. So, I don't I don't uh, accept credit cards through my through my business. You can yeah, write we do, we do a, write lot a check. Through, we do you a do. lot through credit card transactions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always want to do the credit card because it's a big purchase. But you so, gotta pay those fees. Um, yeah, we just tack it on. But I but I did yeah. um I did make them wait. So they, they sent over the money and then the next day the lawyer's like, Hey man, can you come in and, and sign this release form? And I was like, No, not yet. I was like, you know, they did pay with a credit card, so they can dispute the charges. I was right. like, we need to let this just wait, you know, just just let it simmer, let it wait, let it go through the bank. That way, they can't dispute the the charges. Right. So, I think we're two weeks in right now, and I still haven't released it. So the lien is with the homeowner; it's not with the GC. The GC can I just can like not that. pay you and skip town. So he did. He did file Chapter Seven bankruptcy, um, and he signed. He signed the bankruptcy the day I sent my invoice. So I had. <laughs> I've got everything. I've got. I mean, I've got a folder like this of all his information. I've got all the, all the people that he's uh, filing bankruptcy on. All the amounts. I mean, okay. I've got all his information, and I had like thirty days to. Um, 
contest his bankruptcy to get on that creditor report. But my lawyer, man, he's like, you know, he told me he wouldn't even do it because he charges $350 per hour. And he, I mean, he, he flat out told me that he was like, so, you know, if you want to go to the bankruptcy court and do this, he was like, right. Need, like you need to call someone else. Cause I'm going to charge you so much yeah. money. It's yeah. not going to be worth it. Right. So, cause this also, this is probably smaller, a smaller project for you. Anyways, you're dealing with a smaller, you know, this isn't like going to make or break Jan's drywall. Uh, I mean, for, yeah, fortunately, man, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm very blessed that, yeah, yeah, a lot of people, this would, this would shut down a lot of people. I mean, yeah, if you listen to the Danny Carrillo episode, he does, did a lot of commercial projects. Uh, yeah, he got screwed getting into commercial too. You could, he yeah. get screwed a lot of money, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's uh it's relative. It's all relative. We are blessed that uh we live in a country we're afforded the possibility and the opportunities to create businesses and run businesses and make money and take care of our families and things like that. Uh, you know, it's always good to reflect on the positives. Uh you've been going for 10 years. This is the first instance that this has happened. Yeah. What is your what's your takeaway from this experience? What would you do differently next time? Just uh, take those deposits, man. Just get those deposits. Um, my lawyer also recommended that I put in my contracts that um, they are they. He told me to put in my contract that if the bill is not paid. We will be putting a lien on the property and you will be charged for lawyer fees. Right. Okay. So if they if they agree to that, you know, then obviously I would definitely take this guy to court and okay. really sue the shit out of him because he would be responsible for those lawyer fees. Okay. But because I'm responsible for the lawyer fees, it's kind of a you know, you gotta weigh your options like you want to spend all this money on the lawyer just to get two thousand dollars or yeah you know, or what? Great tip. Uh that that is that is a good it's all tip. in the contracts, man. Like you gotta have you gotta have it in writing, you know. I remember a job once, it was a sizier job, fresco, uh maybe twenty K. It, when it's over ten or eleven thousand, I go into a third uh, payment system, and for me, it would be like the equivalent of the drywall being hung, but it's the base coat of Fresco Harmony. So uh, I do ha uh, one third up front, a third after everything's prepped and base coat is on, because then we're rolling, and I and that's generally about the halfway point. The final third. Yeah, the, yeah, the final third is paid uh, when the job is complete or, you know, 30, 30, 30, and then you hold 10% back for uh, and go backs and things like that. That's also yeah, a good, good way to do it. It's very hard because like, you know, once you start working for, for corporations and builders and contractors, like, like they're not paying you when it's done. You know, like you, you do, like we have a lot of clients that, that we have to wait, you know, it's a net 30. So, yeah. and, th and they're not given any deposits. Like that's just how, you know, there's, there's a guy on TikTok, man, that he, he uh, buys and flips houses and stuff. And he says to stay leery of the people that want 50% down. And he, the reason he says that is, you know, he says uh, like these big, big companies, like, you know, they do a whole job and don't get no money down in which he's, he's, he's right. I mean, we'll do, you know, a whole job, the whole Panda express and we don't get shit until right. 30, 30 days after the job. Why do you do that job then? Just cause the profit margins are good. The money's profit, good. Profit margins profit. are good. And there's, there's probably more, uh, um, bureaucracy in place for a panda express where yeah, you know you, you 
you're gonna there's get a lot paid. of paperwork yeah yeah <laughs> there's a lot you're, of paperwork you're, involved yeah um very cool yeah i remember i had a job so yeah it was a it was a larger job we were doing the the percentages and i had a payment schedule and uh i hadn't gotten the deposit up front we had the material we were there to start the job me and two other dudes and i still hadn't gotten paid and the guy he was weird about the contract and I, we had done back and forth with the contract, and he still hadn't signed uh, on the start date. And I was like, no, this is the schedule, because I was leaving or whatever. I needed certain amounts at certain times. And, you know, I know my worth. Been in business for 20 years. <laughs> like, I don't need you to, you know, if you're not 100% sure of me, then don't hire me. Yeah. Um, so, and, uh, he, he called me an effer mother effer and sh was shoving the money in my, but we were pulled off the job. We were, we were getting ready to pull off the job. And I did for that day. Like we were there to start. He didn't want to agree to the contract all the way up until the start date. And I walked I was like, you know, and I didn't, I couldn't afford to walk, but it's, uh, that was one instance where, uh, if you know your worth, uh, you know, cause there are subcontractors that do take advantage too. That is totally a thing where people, they're crackheads and they, they take money and they go get drugs and you never okay. see that dude again. That happens too. So also don't hire people that maybe aren't licensed or you don't you don't have any uh, testimonials about how they work. Uh, well, what's, what's interesting is like literally while the day I'm going to sign the, the, the lean paper, I met with a customer and um, it was a it was a whole house, you know, 20. It was like twenty five thousand dollar house. And uh, the guy was like pointing out some stuff he's like oh hey like if you know if you guys are hanging drywall and you see uh, a nailer missing you know put it in and i was like no like we're not framers like you need to have all the studs put in all the nailers put in like prior to us but um, i had this feeling and i almost i wanted to walk from the job right then and there okay like, i remember yeah. standing in the room and i was like just turn this one down jason it's yeah. Be a problem. <laughs> yep. We should just turn this down. I end up doing the job. I end up taking the job. Uh huh. It come down. We 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 did the drywall. It was all fantastic. They ended up cutting some holes in the in the walls and adding some shit, you know. And uh, we did we we patched that all up, and then what we're done. And uh, he gave me a deposit. I got my deposit. And then I added on, you know, extra for the extra work. And uh, he goes, why, why is my bill higher than it was? And I was like, well, because you added in all this work. Well, I don't, that, that's, that's just too much. I don't, you know, blah, 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 blah. And um, I ended up, I was so pissed, man. I ended up meeting, meeting the guy and everything. And he also wanted to hold $2,700 until he had paint trim and floors installed and then we would come back and do touch up and i was like and you know i just had gotten screwed over by this contractor like five days prior so like i'm on high alert you know? oh yeah so i met with the homeowners and i was like no like this is unacceptable like Right. I'm not allowing you to hold this money. Like that's no. Like I yeah. And he's like, well, I need some kind of skin in the game. And I was like, dude, I just got screwed over. I'm not letting it happen again. Like right. no. I was like, you need yeah. to pay me. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Said, uh, and hey, I'll come back. I'll come back yeah, and, and fix it, dude. Like he was like, well, how do I know you're gonna come back? I'm like, yeah. This, how did you get my number off of Google? Yeah. I was like, you see those seventy five star right. reviews. I was right. like, I don't want you to go on there and put one on there that says I didn't come back for some touch up. Right. And I was like, what 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 do you Good see point. that we need to fix? And he was like, Well, I don't see nothing. Yeah. I'm like, okay. He's like, Well, I'm waiting on other guys to point stuff out. I said, No, man, this like our agreement <laughs> is between me and you. 
Like, I don't care what the trim guy points yeah, out. Like, yeah, the painter's going to come through and put blue tape on everything. And it's like, yeah, fuck like, that guy. I ain't working for that guy. That's for sure. So we ended up we ended up settling. Um, he, I did, I did let him hold back five hundred dollars. Sure. And uh, okay, I, I made him set a day. I said, look, man, you have you know thirty days. Uh, okay. To, to pay me my money, I said Love because that you know after so many days, it's different in each state based on the amount of the money, but you only have a certain amount of time before you can put a lien on someone's someone's house. Right. Yeah. So I do know, I do know more. that. Um, I think it's yeah, 60, 90 days, but yeah, you want to yeah, be based off of the money, the amount. Yeah. So different days for different amounts. So, and I told the homeowner that I said, you know, I can't wait for all these trades to come in and do their job and then me come and touch it up. I said, because I lose rights to putting a lien on your house. You know, I said, Mm -hmm. I know you don't trust. I said, I know you don't know me and I don't know you. So I can't have you hold $2,500 for X amount of days. Like it's just not happening. And I should have walked from that job. So trust your gut. Like if you don't feel it's the right job for you, just walk away. I should have. I should have walked away from it. I mean, we're gonna come out fine in the end. Yeah, uh, he's actually got. Just looked at it today. He's got until October third uh, for us to come back and do the touch up. So it's coming up next week. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna come out fine on it. But I should. I should have walked away from it. <laughs> Interesting. And even knowing what you know now and the fact that you're going to do okay, just dealing with that, dealing with the guy, it's not worth, there's an, there's an 80, 20 rule. Yeah. The, the long story short is you do not have to put up with, uh, with challenging clients. You are yeah. in charge and, uh, know your, know your worth. Uh, yeah. That is a really tough one for us. And it's kind of like why I wanted to have this conversation. It was interesting to me. And I was like, oh, Jason seemed like a pretty nice guy. Like, you know, I mean, we're all, you know, we all have people that don't like us. I've had, you know, unhappy clients. It happens. Um, You know, I mean, at at, at certain point I've had, I've had a time where I was just like, I'm not going back again. You know, this is, Frescoes gets delicate too because it's an artistic finish. It's like, dude, we do this all day long. Jack did a good job. Like we've been back to do a round of touch ups. You're done. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and you're not treating me kindly too. That goes yeah. a long way too. Don't. I'm not your slave. Uh, okay. you know, if if you're cool, I'll be cool. It'll all be cool. But if you're a dick, then, uh, you know, I'm not coming back to, you know, wipe your ass. Uh, and that's, and yeah. that's what people, that's what some people do, man. I mean, they, they want, they, they just take advantage of you, you know, and yeah, I can see, you, I can see right through it. So <laughs> like, I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> you get good at it after a little while, but it costs money. And then early on, yeah. you got to take your lumps because you don't, you know, you don't know as much, but yeah, uh, early on, I mean, you gotta, yeah, you gotta take on everything, right? Like when you're first starting out, you're, you, you can't turn, you can't afford to turn down work. So yeah, I mean, I've definitely, yeah, I've definitely had, had those challenges, but once you yeah. get to a place, you know, you're, you're able to, turn down turn down stuff i mean i almost walked yeah. off a fifty thousand dollar job a month ago because mm-hmm. the gc was just being a dick and I, I i mean i about walked i was like i don't i don't need this shit yeah yeah uh very cool good intel uh i like this episode jason marshall jams drywall you can hear his full story on episode 47 if you are inclined it's very good as well as this episode uh you're very well spoken you're obviously very knowledgeable and 31 years young so it's impressive that you are as far along as you are uh as young as you are and successful that's very cool. And I appreciate your time and sharing with us your experience around this uh, kind of a crappy deal, but also at the same time, good knowledge for other contractors. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad we uh, verified the time yesterday because I thought it was going to be uh, 
9 a.m. my time. And yeah. I went to uh, I went to the Cincinnati Bengals football game last night. So I didn't get home until like 2.30 this, this morning. And I was like, man, I'm going to have to wake up in like six hours and do a podcast. Yeah, like, no, dude, you get to sleep in a little bit. <laughs> oh I, man everybody was calling me at 6 30 in the morning Every, I yeah had this call and I'm like oh, yeah man, <laughs> how the bangles so do huh Is that, were you going for the bangles who were you rooting yeah. for you yeah, were it was the bangles and the the commanders which they were the redskins prior but okay now they're, you know the commanders okay so uh, yeah they lost they put up a good Good. It was a good game, but they ended up losing. But it was yeah. really cool. It was my first NFL game that I went to. So, uh, I've never been to an NFL game, but yeah, I've heard they're pretty fun. And you, it, it's worth it, man. So, yeah. And the trick, the trick is, is we bought the cheap tickets. They were like 150 bucks, nosebleed seats. Mm-hmm. Um, Damn, but, 150 for a nosebleed ticket to a football game. Yeah, yeah. But here's the trick not everybody takes their seats right, right. so you can I sneak mean, down yeah we were we were six rows up from the from the field <laughs> there you go there you go yeah a uh, pearl of wisdom if you don't mind besides the pearls of uh watching out for uh shady contractors what advice would you give our drywall community uh contracts make sure you have uh a good established detailed contract, what you're going to do, how much it's going to be and what they can expect. So we're, we're currently working on a okay. uh, procedure. And what that is, is we'll be able to send the customer okay. a uh, procedure list of how Smart. the things are going to go. So um, if you could take note of all the questions that you get over the years, you'll notice that they're like basically the same questions, right? People ask the same thing over and over different clients. Okay. Your guy is showing up, you know, why is nobody here today? Because it's wet. So right, we try to, right. we'll try to answer all of those questions before they get asked. They're hung over. <laughs> yeah. Luckily <laughs> I don't, I don't have to deal with that, but, but yeah, just try to try to, Try to get a procedure list going, you know, that okay. you can send over what your quote so that they know what they can expect. Okay. And uh, that'll make that'll make things run a lot smoother, man. Very cool. Very cool. That is a uh that's a really good t- uh procedure. Not only a contract, yep. but also a procedure so that they know what to expect, commonly asked questions, maybe a section. Yeah. And you could do that on your website also, uh, have a commonly asked question and then answers for those questions. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> if you have a website. A lot of a lot of people don't know that the hangers and the finishers are are two separate people, right? So we have that we have that listed in there that our hanging team members will come and hang the drywall. Okay. They are gonna leave the drywall scraps on the floor like okay. it's going to be a yes yeah. <laughs> we'll get them. number two yeah, we're going to get them. number two is somebody's going to come and clean up that mess and then step number three is, yeah you know the yeah we're gonna you, you get that call it. hey hey the drywall guy is left this place is a mess man when, you, when are we getting it it's like uh, they're going to be there tomorrow you know they're picking yep. up another house today we got the trailer the procedure list. I sent you, it was already, you know, your question is already <sighs> Very, answered in the procedure list. Yeah. I like that. That's smart. Uh, Jason Marshall. Thank you so much, sir. I know you're a busy man. This was good. I think this was helpful and, uh, hopefully it won't happen anymore. We can learn a little bit from, uh, you know, these adversities and your business yeah. experience. And, uh, when we go to, do a contract for our next job. We'll take some of these tips and tricks into consideration. And always, always try to learn from other people's mistakes. So yeah. hopefully, um, hopefully some people learn from my mistake of not taking that deposit and yep. not going with my gut. So yeah, for sure. Always a pleasure, buddy. I hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll uh, keep in touch. You can follow Jason on Facebook. Yeah. Yep, Facebook, Instagram, 
TikTok, all that, okay. all that stuff, man. Jams all Drywall, that, pretty easy. All that good stuff, Jams Drywall. Look out for Jams, or if you're not following Jams, go follow his stuff. His content is really great. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. All right, man. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, buddy. You too. Bye. See you. Huge shout out to Jason Marshall for being with us on the Drywall Podcast today. Some sound advice from a veteran in the industry. Thank you so much for your time and energy. I'm sure our listeners will glean some valuable uh, tips and tricks from this episode. Today's episode was brought to you by Fresco Harmony, making walls better since 2004. You can find out more information about Fresco Harmony if you visit our website at www.frescoharmony.com and you can start coloring the world. This crazy thing that I call the Drywall Podcast can be listened to on your favorite platforms such as but not limited to Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and also YouTube. If you're an impatient person like myself, you can watch each episode in its entirety one whole day before it comes out on our YouTube page. Head over there and hit the subscribe button if you are inclined. I certainly would appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me on the Drywall Podcast today. I hope you got a lot of good information out of this one. Join us next Friday for a brand new episode of the Drywall Podcast. But until then, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And remember, keep drywalling.